Okay, so in this video, I thought it would be a good idea to go over the bevel deformer. A um, little bit different type of deformer as it's more modeling related. Uh, and it also allows us to kind of work procedurally by adding bevels at the very end of the modeling process. And uh, it gives us the ability to turn them on or off, um, adjust them. Uh, in a lot of ways, it is similar to working with the bevels in the cap section of an extrude but we can do this on a polygon object. So let's go ahead and see how we do that. All right, so I have a simple cube here that I just inset each of the polygons and extruded them back to give us um, this little detailed cube to work with here. And what I want to show you is a different way of kind of approaching rounding out these edges. And rounding out edges is very important when it comes to lighting and materials to make uh, materials look more realistic. Same with our geometry. So it, it really can make a big difference how and when we bevel. Uh, now, what you may be used to is making a selection of edges, right-clicking, and then going to your bevel tool, and then beveling. And you can, have, of course, add subdivisions. Um, and, you know, depending on how you've made the object, uh, you can approach this in a lot of different ways. But the one downside of beveling at this point is that it's very destructive and that now I am stuck with this bevel on my object and kind of doing a weird thing at the corners there, but um, not a huge deal for, for this uh, purpose. But yeah, now this is destructive. If at any point I want to come in and change this, I'm going to have a much more difficult time. If I want to bevel other edges, I forgot to bevel an edge, I might as well end up just starting over. So that's where the bevel deformer comes from, is it allows us to do um, a lot of the same things we can do with our bevel tool, but in deformer form. So we can find this under our deformers, and it's at the very bottom here. And I feel like it goes overlooked, um, not utilized as much as it could be. And just like our other deformers, it can work as a child or a peer, uh, meaning if I group this and make it a child, uh, it would work on multiple objects that um, it is a peer of or on the same level of. So that can be a, another way of using this and applying bevels to multiple objects at the same time. But here you can see we've now added this bevel. I'm going to turn on my line so we can see this a bit better. You see we have that most of a hard edge bevel at the moment, which may be what we're looking for. But like I said, this is all being generated Procedurally, I can turn this on or off at any point, and it's determining what edges should be beveled based on this angle threshold. Okay, so right now, any edge that is more than 40 degrees is going to be beveled. You can see we have a 90 degree edge here. Uh, so if I turn this up to, say, 91, you will see those edges are no longer beveled. So nice at 40, you know, is the default since it does do a pretty good job. You know, you can see it's getting all of my kind of profile edges, the ones that are actually defining corners and not really getting the, the edges that are, are just, you know, there to, you know, connect some, some points. So um, very nice there. You can work with this in a number of different component modes, though edges is by far the most common. Um, we also have our angle threshold, but if you want to take it a step further, you can also apply this to just a selection of edges. So for instance, I have my cube and I take the selection that I had previously, go to my select menu and choose store selection. I can then use the stored selection to apply a bevel just there. And you can add multiple selections here. So really nice that you can um, do that. So that very helpful. You have a couple of different bevel modes. Um, chamfer is kind of what you're most used to, solid can actually be almost helpful if you're going to uh, apply a subdivision surface to something like this. You can see how it's um, adding a lot of edge loops around the corners. Okay, you also have different offset modes, though perhaps those would be a little bit easier to see um, with this setback to chamfer. Um, not really seeing a big difference here. In fact, this is actually kind of breaking. So let's see if we can see something a little bit different here. Nope, still just kind of breaking. Um, ideally, fixed distance or even proportional can sometimes be helpful, but we will stick with fixed distance for today. Offset 
how much of this bevel you want, subdivisions, how many additional segments you want in there to round this out. You can see we're getting something that looks pretty good. Lots of nice curved edges, smooth edges uh, that help soften up the corners, make it look more realistic, uh, and will help with the materials in lighting. You also can limit the depth and actually lines back on for this because you can almost, well, you can reverse this and make it go in. So it's now curving inward instead of outward. Uh, the shaping as well can be interesting because you could come here to user and create your own curve. Okay, now you can see um, how crazy this is going at the moment. But we could certainly make some changes here to get something that would work a lot better. And we even have some basic ones that we can work with. All right, so I'm not sure why they're not working out here. Let's see. So there's the default. Let's try that again. So user, maybe just size a little bit more, a couple more segments. No, it's just what it wants to do. Okay. And then you can also load in a profile spline as well to get more detail. All right, back to round. It's typically how I would use this anyway. Um, and then lastly, we have some topology options here. So for the mitering, you can decide how you want the corners to be handled, whether it's the default, whether it's radial. All right, patch, once again, kind of four-sided, helps for subdivision surfaces. Um, ending, haven't really seen much of a difference with those options. Um, and partial rounding, um, not really something you'll use a whole lot. Um, you can also decide whether you want engons in the corners, all right, or even rounded engons, followed up by breaking the fong shading, um, either at the rounding, which can be helpful, just so we can kind of see what this looks like, all right, um, and then the miters as well. So you can definitely make things look a lot better, help you achieve um, the shading you want without having to go in and um, make too many manual adjustments. So that's uh, the bevel deformer here. Now I wanna point out one thing, one little drawback of the bevel deformer. And that is, let's say I have this cube and I'm applying materials to it, let's say those materials. And now I add my bevel deformer. So it applies that material to that same cube. There's no way to kind of expand it or change that since these polygons are being created after the material is applied. So that's kind of the one drawback. Um, you could use um, fields to help with the selection of polygons and to determine what material should go where, but it's a little bit um, unfortunate that right out of the box that uh, you, you are limited um, in the, the polygons you can apply material to because you don't really have access to the uh, polygons that are being created uh, by the bevel. So that is the bevel deformer. Hopefully you liked the video. If there's anything else you would like to see, please just let me know um, and take care.